Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Harish talking about air quality index. Uh, it's a unitless, means it do not carry units like liter, meter, grams, etc. So it's a unitless color coded numerical value indicating the level of pollution or the quality of air at a particular location. Different countries use different methods and scales to represent their air quality. In India, we use national air quality index also abbreviated as INDAQI. It has a scale from 0 to 500 and is divided into six categories as in the table. Each category is associated with corresponding health impacts. First category is with minimal impacts. A second category uh, impacts sensitive people. The next category impacts vulnerable people that is people with lung disease, heart disease, young ones, old ones, etc. Fourth category impacts all, including healthy people who get exposed. In the next category, impacts get manifested as illness. And the last category leads to severe health effects. Correspondingly, each of these categories were color coded and were assigned with description. This AQI acts as one number, one color and one description that is all in one tool to judge the air quality. Given any one out of these, we can pursue other aspects. It was launched in September 17, 2014 by Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change and is monitored by Central Pollution Control Board. CPCB in its website provides real-time AQI values of certain cities and it also has published online calculator by feeding air monitoring data of a location into this calculator, we can get the AQI values of that location. Then the functions are purpose of AQI. It provides information to the general public about the air quality in a simplified way so that even a common person can modify his activities accordingly. It helps in ranking of location. Now we can grade different locations or cities based on the AQI values. It helps in enforcement of standards that is to determine the extent to which the standards are being met and plan the pollution control measures accordingly that is to stop the industrial activities, change the traffic like that. So then it helps in trend analysis that is to determine uh, how the air quality is changing over a period of time. It also helps in forecasting that is prediction of air quality in immediate coming days. It helps the administrators in determining priorities and allocating funds. It also helps in scientific research by providing comprehensive air quality data. But uh, it is designed for general purpose and not for scientific purpose as it is based on the maximum operator which we are going to discuss. Formulation of NAQI. If we understand how this NAQI is formulated, it becomes easy to calculate it. This formulation is discussed in uh, following four stages. First, uh, set the criteria for the AQI. Based on the criteria, choose the pollutants to be included. For each of the pollutant, find out the corresponding sub-index value. Aggregate these sub-indices to get an overall AQI. First stage is set the criteria or requirements for the AQI. Based on the functions of AQI that we discussed in the previous slide, following criteria can be established. Uh, it should be easy to understand, uh, simple to calculate, include major air pollutants which have short term exposure limits measurable quickly so that the index can indicate day to day variations uh, should be consistent with perceived air pollution levels uh, should be logical that is it should rest on some scientific base so these are the criteria that can be established to our AQI second stage is the identification of pollutants to be included in the AQI uh, for this uh, CPCB listed eight criteria pollutants in its national ambient air quality standard were chosen. Uh, they are listed here in this table. Uh, particulate matter of size 10 micron, size 2.5 micron, NO2, SO2, 
carbon monoxide remember carbon dioxide is not there in the ambient air quality standard because uh, carbon dioxide is a natural component of the air uh, ozone uh, ammonium and lead uh, they were chosen because they satisfy the criteria what we discussed in the previous slide they are the major pollutants are found in almost all polluted locations have short term exposure limits that is uh, these two have hourly uh, as well as eight hourly standards then 24 hours standard so and also these pollutants can be measured in relatively short time uh, except lead so lead cannot be measured in real time hence is not a part of real time aqi but it is considered in the calculation of past days aqi uh, corresponding to the time of lead measured in the third stage sub index value for each of the pollutant was established uh, this is done by establishing a relationship between index value and the concentration of the pollutant however we cannot establish a linear relationship between these two this is because uh, this do not this linear relationship rather do not match with the sigmoid curve of the dose response relationship hence we require to establish a segmented a linear relationship that is you know so linear within the segments these this one segment this is one segment so such uh, segmented linear relationship should be established so this can be achieved through following steps in the first step uh, index scale of 0 to 500 was chosen and was divided into six categories as in the table uh, due importance was given to lower level categories as they correspond to low level pollution hence there are two categories between 0 to 100 unlike higher categories uh, in the next step uh, for each of the index category and for each of the pollutant the respective concentration grades were assigned taking into account dose response relation and the ambient air quality standard so ambient air quality standard for each of the pollutant is uh, listed here this uh, standard is divided into two equal halves and the first half is assigned to uh, the first category and the second half of this standard is assigned to the second category hence uh, aqi value of 100 corresponds to the ambient air quality standard and the value below 100 are generally considered as satisfactory the third category was assigned with concentration range where known health effect starts uh, we can see these in this table and for remaining three categories the concentration range were assigned based on us epa because in india we don't have known health criteria for many of these pollutants the minimum and the maximum concentration values in a particular slab across the concentration range of a particular pollutant can be considered as breakpoint concentration so when we plot the index scale versus the concentration of the pollutant here pm10 we get a segmented linear relationship like this so in this uh, we have first category second category third category so we have corresponding segments so within these segments we can get a linear relationship so this segmented linearity can be expressed with the help of the segmented linearity equation so using this equation we can extrapolate the concentration to the index to get our sub index value so how this is being done uh, we are going to uh, understand so in this equation c observance is the observed pollutant concentration i si is the sub index value of the observed pollutant and that we are going to uh, find out so other aspects of the equations can be understood with the help of this 
example. So here we try to find out uh, the sub-index value for the pollutant PM2.5 at the given concentration of 250.5 microgram per meter cube. So this becomes our C observance. Uh, let's put it here. So now uh, we require to find these four aspects. So to find out these four aspects, we require to find to which uh, color category this given concentration falls. So if we see this uh, table, so we can see 250 here. But if you look at this symbol, uh, you can realize that uh, it do not include uh, the value anything above 250. So even 250.01 uh, will not fall in this category. So because uh, it cannot be rounded up. So whereas you see this, so there is no such symbol, so it can be rounded down. So this 251, uh, let's assume that is only for indicative purpose and for any calculation, we require to round it down to 250 and consider. So C minimum can be uh, drawn as 250, then I maximum is 300 and I minimum again uh, should be rounded down to 200. So then uh, C maximum 350 and minimum plus index minimum that is rounded down value. So on calculation we get the sub index value of 200.5. This can be calculated for all other pollutants. So ideally will be having eight sub indices when we cannot monitor all the eight parameters uh, we can do it with a minimum of three parameters uh, out of which one should necessarily be either pm 2.5 or pm 10 uh, correspondingly we will be having three sub indices so we have a maximum of eight and uh, a minimum of up to three sub indices and these sub indices require to be aggregated to get the overall AQI. The, this aggregation can be by simple or weighted average method or summation or multiplication operation or simply it is a maximum or a minimum operator. In any AQI what we are discussing uh, it is by a maximum operator method so that is uh, the maximum out of uh, up to eight sub indices will be considered as a AQI value so this is because uh, this maximum operator method is free from eclipsing and ambiguity so these two are a type of statistical errors uh, which you please refer in statistics so apart from this the synergistic effects of combination of pollutants uh, are not known uh, hence, a uh, health based index cannot be combined or weighted, uh, and so. So, this is about our uh, AQI. Let's uh, look into an example of AQI calculation. Uh, so, here we have a problem uh, the time is given, location is given, the least of pollutant parameters are given uh, with uh, their uh, sampling duration and the measured values so lead value is not given uh, as long as we have values for a minimum of three parameters uh, one out of that uh, is pm 10 and pm 2.5 so the data is, uh, the data is sufficient for our calculation so let's uh, try to calculate so for convenience uh, let's make uh, a table like this uh, otherwise you can do it without the table also so we have listed the pollutants uh, the sampling period uh, the measured value we have listed here from the table number three how uh, we can sort out these values corresponding to the observed concentration of the pollutants so here uh, index minimum and concentration minimum values are rounded down values so these values are submitted to this equation 
to get corresponding sub index values so out of this uh, the maximum operator is 112 which stands for our air quality index while reporting uh, we should mention the aqi value its uh, color category and the description uh, we should also mention the responsible parameter here it is pm 2.5 so 112 corresponds to pm 2.5 we should also mention uh, the date on which the sampling is done and the location of where the sampling is done possibly uh, if we mention the time also uh, it would be better because uh, that indicates the previous 24 hours sampling uh, some points to be noted uh, use 24 hourly average concentration for the calculation of aqi in case of carbon monoxide and ozone uh, we can use eight hourly or hourly values uh, since the real-time values of the pollutants vary diurnally, AQI values also vary accordingly. Uh, even if seven pollutants have better reading and uh, one pollutant uh, is having poor reading, the AQI value uh, falls under poor category. Since uh, it is not a synergistic uh, uh, parameter AQI reflects uh, the status of the worst pollutant in the city uh, then uh, since the AQI is a uh, out of maximum operator method the overall AQI cannot be broken down into component pollutant concentration so this is about uh, national ambient air quality index mm, thank you uh, please like it and subscribe it